I love food that's simple to prepare, but you get great results in the kitchen with very little effort. And I'm gonna show you a few of those recipes today. I'm going to start first of all by making some grilled bread with prosciutto di parma and tomatoes. And together with my student Serena, we're going to make some basmati rice with roasted pepper and peas. And to go on the top of that, some sizzling shrimp with pimenton and sherry. So don't go anywhere, you're in for a treat with some simple but very elegant dishes. Guys could have laughed at that. <laughs> Funding provided by the producers of Grano Padano, Parmigiano Reggiano, and Montazio cheese, Prosciutto di Parma, and Prosciutto di San Daniele. Behind every bite, centuries of tradition. By Village Harvest, offering a variety of authentic traditional rice and grains, variety you can taste. Village Harvest can also be found in the frozen foods department. By Anilon Nouvelle Copper, copper innovation in non-stick cookware. By remarkable recipes from Blue Ribbon Orchard Choice and Sunmade California Figs. I'm going to start first of all by slicing the bread. And I like to use a nice coarse textured bread for this. And then I take some olive oil, some nice fruity extra virgin olive oil, and I brush that right on the bread. It's going to give the bread a lot of flavor. All right, place those on the grill and brush on the other side. You can do this, of course, on an outdoor grill. You can put those under the broiler or even in your toaster oven. So there's lots of options. I'm going to make a garlic oil. So I'm taking some cloves of garlic and I'm going to put them in a mortar and pestle. I love to use a mortar and pestle. The garlic forms a paste and it mixes really well with the olive oil. I slice the garlic into really thin slices and then I place that in the mortar and pestle. You're gonna find that you use a mortar and pestle for spices and garlic. It's really a great thing to have in the kitchen. I use a pinch of salt. It absorbs the moisture on the garlic and makes it much easier to mash. The mortar has a rough surface on the inside and it makes it really easy to mash the garlic or spices or whatever you're using it for. Make sure you keep checking your bread, because bread toasts very, very quickly. So now I have this really nice paste. That's what I want. I can add some extra virgin olive oil to it. I'm gonna make this delicious olive oil scented with that nice fresh garlic. And then you can combine that. Okay, these are done. Look how beautiful and golden they are on each side. Not to mention how great the flavor is going to be. I take a tomato and I'm using some beautiful heirloom tomatoes. And you really only need about one tomato for all of this. So it's like cut it in half. Cup it in your hand just like that. And you just rub this. You're leaving all that juice and the seeds right on the top of the bread. Stir that garlic oil together again and drizzle a little bit of that right on the top. You can get the garlic in everything. Add the garlic, it's delicious. Let me show you this because this is really important. When you're buying prosciutto, you want to make sure it's paper thin. This prosciutto di parma is cut just perfectly. You can almost see through it. That's what you want. You don't want it to be thick. If it's thick, it's going to be chewy and I just ribbon it right onto the top of the bread. And it's delicious with the garlic and the tomato. Well, I really love simple food, and I think that when you have great ingredients, 
it's really not very difficult to do it. You know, you just have to come up with the idea, just a little bit of work, and you're really just making something taste even better. What I like to do is take a few olives. These are Casavetrano olives. I'm just adding a little bit of oil to them because if you add some oil, it gives a little bit of shine to your olives and it makes them look that much nicer. I love Casa Vetrano. They kind of have a nice crunch to them, and I just sprinkle a few olives around. Doesn't that look great? The last thing, I just like a little bit of parsley, just a sprig, and that's it. That is my favorite kind of food. It's so simple and so delicious. Around the entire Mediterranean, they like bread that's grilled with a little bit of olive oil and garlic. And this time I thought, we'll add some tomato because the tomatoes are so beautiful. And then with some prosciutto to add the saltiness, it's just a perfect combination. Mm. Oh, that's really good. Mm. And you put garlic in it. Mm -hmm. I could taste it. Mm -hmm. This is more um, inspired by Spain. It's bread that's toasted, rubbed with a little bit of garlic, okay. oil, and then some prosciutto di parma on the top. Yeah, it's delicious. I can definitely taste the garlic. <laughs> this is my student, Serena, and she loves food. And today, you're here to learn how to cook. How's that? I'm here to learn how to cook. I know how to eat, so the goal is to learn how to cook. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad, because I think today, we're gonna have some fun in the kitchen for sure. All right, awesome. Are you ready to uh, go over there and tackle it? Born ready, let's do it. Okay, good. We're gonna start first of all by roasting a pepper. So you can see what we've done so far. It's black on the outside. Mm -hmm. To ro Have you ever roasted a pepper? Does this mean we're gonna peel the skin off of it? Yes. All right, cool. Have you ever done it? Um, I've seen it done. Um, I've never done it though, okay. so what new we, for me. What we want is the entire outside of the pepper to be black like that. So okay. here are the tongs. All right. We're gonna keep turning, but it takes a couple of minutes to do that. Okay, can I use any pepper? Yes, yellow or red. Now, green peppers are not as sweet as okay. a yellow or red pepper or an orange pepper. I suggest you use those, but you could use any pepper, absolutely. All okay. right. And you could do these on your outside grill. That's another way that you can roast your peppers, but you could also do them in a 500 degree oven. Okay. So if you don't have a grill, just put them on a pan whole on a baking sheet in the oven, 500 degrees. You won't get the black on the outside, but the skin will separate away from the flesh of the pepper. Okay, let's see now how it is. Okay. <clears throat> okay, keep going, you can turn it even more. Okay, let me turn it this way. Put okay. it even closer, you can put it right in there. Right on the flame, that's fine. All right, we're going to chop some parsley. All right, fresh this is parsley, brilliant. flat leaf Italian parsley, okay? Mm -hmm. Like you, Italian. <laughs> And what I do is just to pull off these leaves and then go to the top and pull those off, okay. all right? May I? Yes, and we need a few tablespoons. Okay, let's look at the pepper again. Always you wanna keep in the back of your mind, what are you cooking? Okay, we need this whole top to be black too, so what you can do is turn it so oh. the stem is down. Ah, okay. Now do I have to worry about it getting too small or? This is fine, you want it to be finely minced. Okay. So oh. you can chop a little bit more. All right. You can place that back in this bowl. The water, let's see, has come up to a boil. Mm -hmm. You're going to add a teaspoon of salt. Now we're gonna add this wonderful basmati rice. All right, let's do it. Now here's a simple tip. When you're making rice, double the amount of water to rice. Two cups of rice four cups of water. Okay, that makes it easy. And then it, it cooks easy. for about 20 minutes. You wanna make sure it comes back up to a boil. We'll turn it down so it's just simmering, and then we'll put the cover on. So okay. we want it to simmer really slowly. Remember our pepper? Yes. <laughs> um, we've only got one spot right there. Let's just get that one spot. This is probably... Just about done? Yes, it is. All right, brilliant. All right, so we'll put this on the counter. You can invert the bowl right on it. What it does more than anything is it kind of steams it. All right. Ready for this? To I tackle am. this? Looks scary, right? All right, what you're going to do is cut off the top. All right. Oh, it's so easy. Good. 
All right. Now Ooh, what you can do delicious. is cut it this way. It does smell good. It's that nice smoky. All right. Smell from the Should I cut the other skin. end too? No, we're gonna open it up. It's pretty hot, but that's fine. What you're gonna do is to take a knife, scrape off all the seeds. So I use a small knife for this. Mm -hmm. And then we'll get rid of the membrane too. That's this piece right here. Yes. The very, towards the very top. The most important thing here is that you're getting rid of the seeds. All right, there's a few there. Okay, now the really fun part. Okay. You turn it over, and everybody, I know that people want to go to the sink and wash the pepper, and it would be so much easier, but you're going to lose a lot of flavor right down the sink. So instead, what I do is I just do this on the counter with a knife, so you can see that the skin's going to come right off. Yeah, that looks so easy. Go ahead. It's kind of fun. Is it important that I get all these black spots off? If there's a little bit of black, it's fine. You can see there's a couple, that's fine. Just do the best you can. All right. Yeah, it's coming off really easily. Okay, there, that's done. And then? Grab that piece? That piece, yeah. And it's nice to use a combination too. You could use yellow and red. Any color combination looks really nice in the rice. All right, that one seed. Oh, I see it. There we go. Now let's wash off the counter. Otherwise, you're gonna have all of this on the pepper. Yeah. I'm roasting pepper. This was my first time doing it. I've seen it done. I'm glad that we took our time doing that. That, that way I can, I can practice at home because I saw each individual step she took. So it wasn't as hard or complicated that I thought. Now, cut these into about one quarter inch strips like that. Okay. All right. How's that? That's perfect. And then what you can do is turn it this way, oh, and then okay. you're going to cut it into a one quarter inch dice. Right. So those will be about the same size as the peas, and they'll look really nice with the rice. Here you go. OK. Some of them don't look quite like squares. But. I think you did a very good <laughs> job. There you go, they can go into this bowl. Right. And then we'll set that aside and we're gonna add the parsley, the peas, and also the roasted yellow peppers or orange peppers right at the end. I like this part that I get to get my hands a little dirty. You like that? Yeah. <laughs> What I'm doing is just to peel and devein the shrimp. I go all the way down. I like to leave the tail on. I think it's nice for this dish. You can take it off if you want to. But then I take a small knife and just right along the back of the shrimp and then I devein. Oh, that's what you mean by deveining. Okay, yes. you're going to have to show me your technique for that because do that. it looks a little complicated for me. You can see, take your knife. All right. Slice right along the back. See that dark line? Away from me. Yes, I see it. Okay, all right. so. You're going to go right along there, all the way up to the top of the shrimp. All Good. Right. Oh, Open it easy. up. That was easier than I thought. And this black line, I want to pull out. Exactly. And I'm just throwing it where? You're going to throw it right in this bowl. Okay. <laughs> and sometimes you can see that is lighter in color, but you still want to remove it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you're going to go to devein and you're going to find there isn't anything there. All right, last one. There's something about this kind of work. Now see, that one didn't have one. Uh, but there's something about yeah, this work look... that's kind of calming. Okay, so I'm going to slide my knife. Just like that? Oh, I think mine's clean. Let's see. Yes, it is. All right, in that bowl, I'm gonna get rid of these. Okay. Can I use And then this? we can wash our hands. Yes, please. <laughs> if you just watch someone cook, um, you're not really getting a feel for how to do things the right way. So if you get your hands in there and you actually do the movements, you do feel more productive. You do feel like you're the one cooking. And then you realize how, uh, how intimidating it's not. Um, and yeah, you shouldn't be afraid to get your hands a little dirty. That's the only way to learn. Now we are going to peel garlic. So you can take your knife and 
Just peel these cloves. Joanne, I'm noticing that some of these garlic ends are greenish. Um, do I want to cut that off or is No, it... that's absolutely fine. Okay. What you do want to remove is when it's winter and there's a germ that kind of develops in the center, it looks like a little sprout. Mm -hmm. Then you want to remove that because it's bitter. But when it's green like that, that's fine. All right, instead of chopping, what we're going to do is we're going to slice garlic. But make sure you keep your fingertips back, OK? okay? These fingertips. Yes, keep them back because this is a small piece. Then when I get to this point, if it's really small for you to handle, put the cut side down and then just uh, mince the garlic. Okay, let's see. If Go I ahead. Can, let's see if I can handle. I'm that. right here. Okay. <laughs> don't worry. So don't worry about how fast you go. Just make sure they're nice and thin. All right, Serena, put a few tablespoons of olive oil into that pan. Okay. Um, Do you feel comfortable just pouring? Uh, yeah. Okay. You're going to tell me when to stop? I will. Right. All, All right. right. <laughs> so we want about three tablespoons. Brilliant. That's about one. Oh. <laughs> Two. Just a touch more. Good. Okay. That's excellent. Thank you. Now, when we see that pan really rippling, we don't want it too hot because we don't want to burn the garlic. But what we do want to do is we want to soften the garlic. And we're going to put some crushed red pepper with it. Oh, I'm so excited. You like crushed red pepper? I do. Mm -hmm. All right, see how it's rippling in the pan? Can you see that? Is that how I know it's ready for garlic? Yes, go ahead. You all can right. add all of that at once. Oopsie. Now you can take the wooden spoon. And what you're going to do is stir that around a little bit. And you can actually swirl the pan like this, just so it coats the bottom of the pan. Let me see. All right. And then we'll add a pinch of crushed red pepper. A pinch. So I would put it in maybe in the palm of your hand so you can see how much you add, because it's hard to take it out once you've added it. Let's see. Yeah, that's good. That's excellent. And now we're going to cook that for about one minute until the garlic just starts to soften. Mm -hmm. So can I pick up frozen shrimp from the store? Absolutely, and for the most part, that's what you're going to find. Oh, OK. Here, now you can stir. See? See how you're, they're starting to soften a yeah. little bit? And they're great. starting to turn a little translucent? That's what you want. You don't want it, the garlic to take on any color, though. I want you to smell what is that. This? Oh, wow. What is this? This is a Spanish paprika. Okay. And it's smoked, and it's smoked over oak wood. It's going to give a little bit of smokiness to it. Remember, a little bit goes a long way. OK, those are now starting to, uh, they're really soft, so we're ready to add okay. the, the prawns. And you want to add those right away because, together, yes, right? Okay. because Here. you want to cool down the pan so the garlic doesn't continue to cook. Good. What I'm going to do is give you a good bit of pimenton. So you can pimenton. tap that into it. And so just take your, like this, all oh. over the shrimp. Exactly. And I think we'll add a little bit more. Okay. The pimenton will give a nice smoky flavor. It's a lot of prawns. And I love that smokiness. Here you go. Okay. Now you can see when prawns, when you start cooking them, they're kind of opened up and they're gray looking. Uh -huh. When they're finished, they close and they're pink. We want to move these so that the ones on the bottom really get Mixed with that oil and the pimenton, do those smell good? The garlic and pimenton? Yeah. <gasps> smells so wonderful. And pepper. See how they're already turning kind of pink? Mm -hmm. They cook really quickly. Yeah. So I would That's say good. they're probably going to cook in about three minutes. These are a little bit larger, but they cook really fast. See how they're already starting to curl? Yeah. I've got a clean bowl, and we're going to take those out. I'll show you when they're done. This is a very quick dish, and that's the kind of food I love. It's so easy, <laughs> but it's got flavor. You want to turn them with this? That uh, might be easier for you. That's probably going to be. I was to trying be. to give you a challenge. <laughs> oh, yes. This works a lot Good. better. All right. They're more manageable now. The other thing that you're looking for is when you touch them like this, mm -hmm. you want to feel that they're kind of getting firm to the touch. Oh, like that one? Yes, that... like this feel right there, that one. Well, actually, they all are getting pretty close. We can probably use this slotted spoon and start removing them. Yeah, those are done. Isn't that fast? Yeah. All right. Okay, you're and I want to put them in this bowl. Yes, all that right. clean bowl, exactly. Mm. Now you're going to add some Amontillado sherry. Oh, OK.
We're gonna turn this right up to high again. Okay. Now one thing that you wanna do is when you're adding the sherry, is you wanna scrape up those bits that are on the bottom of the pan. What they do is they melt in with the sherry and really give flavor to the sauce. Well, I thought shrimp was a lot more complicated to cook. I've never cooked shrimp on my own, even though I love it. Um, I didn't realize how fast, how fast they turn pink. You know, sometimes I feel really guilty when I make a dish like we made today with the shrimp that's so simple, and yet the results are so delicious. You know, I mean, I studied cooking. Aren't I supposed to be doing all these fancy dishes like I studied in France? But, you know, my favorite food, is where you just have the best ingredients, cooking them with the right techniques, and just really respecting the food. And um, you can't help but get great results in the end. The rice is done now, and we can add the peas to it, and then also those peppers. Okay. And then some parsley. So to fluff, you're gonna just pick up the rice oh, okay. and just combine all the ingredients. So oh, that smells good. So you're picking it up, you're picking the rice up from the bottom. Mm-hmm. Look how beautiful the colors are in the rice. Now let's place these shrimp back in the pan. Okay, all at once? Yes. Like we practiced? I'm gonna turn that off. And all we're doing is just to rewarm them, just a little bit. Okay. Now toss them together with that wonderful sauce. Okay, we're now ready to plate this. We'll put the Where's rice that? on the bottom, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna put the shrimp right on top. So you can spread this out. Okay. Whoops. Like that. How about if I, here, that's the bigger one. I'll give you that one. <laughs> we'll get all those wonderful juices, mm -hmm. like that. And I will pile those up. How's that? Give you a little bit more of the sauce. This is fantastic. I'm learning real gourmet. <laughs> <laughs> and it's easy. The last thing, a little bit of parsley. You can sprinkle some onto the top of your shrimp. Oh yes, the finishing touches. How's that? That's good. You can maybe do just a touch more there. Mm. That was easy, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's a little tempranillo that's gonna be delicious with these. Well, let's see how you did today. Okay, <laughs> I'm ready. Mmm, the rice is delicious. Mm. Wow, that is delicious. Oh, and the pepper just complements it so nicely. The pepper does. It's mm -hmm. really got that nice smoky flavor and it's gonna go so well with the pimenton. Mmm. Here it goes, my first shrimp dish. <laughs> I can't believe I helped you make this. No, you made it. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't help me, you made it. You did a very good job. And what did you learn today? Well, honestly, I can't believe how simple it was. I was expecting a whole extravaganza. You know, sometimes that's true about food. The simplest dishes are the best. Mm -hmm. They are. And it was quick. It was very fast. I grew up eating very well, so um, cooking on my own, I know I have it in me to learn how to cook the way I know how to taste. Um, but I think it just takes a matter of practice and applying the skills that you see and applying the skills that you try out first. Serena is interesting because I loved what she said when she said, I love to eat, I don't know how to cook. And, um, you know, I think giving her just a few ideas, I think she's gonna be good. You know, what it takes, it's just loving food. Just having a few skills, she'll learn more and more. She'll be great. I totally feel more confident. I know that I can practice a whole brand new meal by myself and uh, master it on my own. And I can really impress my, uh, the pants off my dad now. <laughs> There's another chef in the family. <laughs> okay, let's taste the wine and see how it is. All right. Mmm, that's delicious. That isn't is it? good. Wonderful from the northern part of Spain. Well, you were, did such a great job. Today. Yeah, thanks for having me, showing me how to new, do something new. <laughs> Your dad will be very proud of you. Yeah, I can't wait to surprise him. Oh, I think that's great. And you've got to try these dishes too. I think you will love them. There's something about the simplicity that you will really enjoy. See you next time.
If you enjoy Joanne Weir's Cooking Confidence, you can order the companion cookbook, Joanne Weir's Cooking Confidence, Dinner Made Simple, available for $24.95. With full color photos and over 200 pages, this cookbook contains every recipe Joanne cooks in the series and many more. You can order Joanne Weir's Cooking Confidence, Dinner Made Simple by calling 1-800-937-5387 or by visiting channel9store.com. To download Joanne's free appetizers app for the iPad, visit the App Store at apple.com slash iTunes. You can visit our website to find and print selected recipes, get information about each episode, learn more about Joanne and the show, see behind-the-scenes photos, provide email feedback, and more. It's all at joanneweir.com. Funding provided by... The producers of Grano Padano, Parmigiano Reggiano, and Montazio Cheese, Prosciutto di Parma, and Prosciutto di San Daniele. Behind every bite, centuries of tradition. By Village Harvest, offering a variety of authentic traditional rice and grains, variety you can taste. Village Harvest can also be found in the frozen foods department. By Anilon Nouvelle Copper, copper innovation in non-stick cookware. By Remarkable Recipes from Blue Ribbon Orchard Choice and Sunmade California Figs.